Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to welcome you to the Google for Startups Accelerator Cloud Virtual Demo Day, celebrating the 12 technology startups in our very first North American cohort. It has been an absolute honor working alongside these inspiring founders and startup teams over the last three months. My name is Ashley Francisco, and I lead our startup ecosystem efforts at Google across North America. And today, I have the pleasure of co-hosting alongside my Google Cloud colleague, Chris Crompton. The pleasure is all mine, Ashley, and a welcome, an enthusiastic welcome to everyone here for Demo Day. Ten weeks. I can't believe it. The time has just flown. Now, as Ashley mentioned, we've been working alongside the startups here that you'll hear from today since mid-July, and simply can't wait to hear more about all of their accomplishments. Now, over the past 10 weeks, these 12 teams have immersed themselves in cloud optimization, machine learning, uh, product road mapping, design UX, marketing, international expansion, and so much more. Today, we'll hear about their progress and their plans for the future. So let's dive in. Now, each startup will have five minutes to share their story with you and respond to one question. So be sure to ask any questions you have in the chat during the presentation. First up, it is my pleasure to introduce Nick Glass from Aiden Automotive. Based in San Francisco, Aiden is the first software solution to provide two-way communication directly with vehicles and across vehicle brands. Let's turn it over to Team Aiden to get us started. Hi, my name is Niklas Jullenram, and I'm the CEO of Aiden. First of all, I would like to thank Google for all their support and also thank all the great people that we've met through the Google for Startups Accelerator program. So Aiden is the world's first real connectivity platform, bringing all the services you can imagine uh, to your vehicle and making them come to life. The problem up until now has been that we've been talking about connected cars for basically more than 20 years, um, and cars are still not really connected to, to anything. Even though they most of them have built-in modems and really capable hardware, it's not really possible to get services at scale in vehicles. This is really the problem that we're addressing. Over the recent couple of years, uh, Google has been very successful in, in getting Android Automotive launched into most uh, major vehicles, which means that you can get Google Maps and Google Assistant and your favorite music player in your vehicle, which is awesome. You get better navigation system, better voice control and better music players, but it's actually not new features. Those are features that you actually had in cars 20 years ago as well. The situation is still in vehicles that when, when you run low on gas, the only thing that happens is that a warning lamp is lit in the instrument cluster. That's the exact same experience you had 50 years ago. If you drive an EV and you ever have to use public charging stations, I'm sure you felt the pain of constantly having to worry about where do you charge next? Where do I find a working available charging station? and you have to plan your trip. And for some reason, the complete responsibility of charging is on you, it's on the driver. Same thing with parking. When, whenever you get to your destination, it's on the driver to figure out where there is an available parking space, uh, station. And that's just not acceptable. This is what we address at, at Aiden. So what we do is we unlock the potential of connected vehicles and really make it possible to get any service that you can imagine running in your vehicle. Obviously, when you, when you run low on gas, the car should be able to instead give you a list of options for where you need to or could uh, refuel. Same thing with EVs. The charging network should be able to take the responsibility of, of keeping your, your car charged. So with Aiden, we make it possible for the charging uh, infrastructure, the charging network, really, to to take the responsibility of telling people when and where they should charge when they drive from the Bay Area to Tahoe. They can actually plan the whole fleet of vehicles for where they should charge to optimize the usage of, of their uh, infrastructure. Same thing with parking. When you get to your destination, instead of you having to search for the right app to use, the, the right service comes to you automatically, and you are automatically offered available parking spaces and you can automatically have the vehicle pay for, for parking for you. So we really bring a tailored user experience into the vehicle, uh, the vehicle manufacturers branding. We let our service hub be branded by the vehicle manufacturer. The car manufacturer can, can 
uh, individually define and choose exactly which services they want to offer at any given time in any given vehicle. And that's how they can monetize and make money off of these services as well. We let the service providers uh, define their services. They can actually define a service without having to write a single line of code. And deploying a service back to the vehicle is as simple as just building a web page, actually. And you, as the user, are in complete control of your data at any given time. You control exactly which services you want to use at any given time. We are focused on uh, privacy regulations and and not only complying, but actually embracing GDPR and CCPA. Uh, your data is your data, and we are really focused on making sure that you get the best imaginal uh, service in your car. And we say service because it's not an app. Instead, we don't believe in having thousands of apps in your, in your vehicle. Instead, you can get thousands of services automatically. You don't need to download them. They are just constantly running in the background, and whenever they're needed, they are automatically offered to you. We're very thankful for having been part of the, the, the accelerator program with, with Google. It's been great, really helpful, and we've learned a lot. Uh, and we're really happy to have met all the other startups in the program as well. We currently have really good traction uh, with Aiden. We've, we've, uh, we're currently actually scaling up in two different production projects with two different OEMs. We've got a multitude of services uh, onboarded both in the US, Europe, Australia, and Japan. And if you're interested to learn more, please reach out to me or any of my colleagues. Thank you very much. Amazing. Thank you so much for kicking us off today. A question from our viewers. As car owners, how can the Aiden platform ensure that our consent and the services we subscribe to in one car get transferred to another, for example, if we buy another car? That's, that's a great question. Um, it's, and it's very, very simple, actually. Um, as an owner you can all, and a driver, you can, you can always, you're always in complete control over exactly which services are running. As an owner, you actually can go into uh, a portal page on your phone or on your, on your uh, laptop or tablet um, to turn services on and off in your car. Um, and then as a driver, you will always know exactly which services are running in that vehicle and, and you'll be able to turn off activated services if you, if you don't want to run them. So you're always in complete control. All right, we're off to a great start. And next up, we'll be hearing from Dimitri, who's the CEO of Passio.ai, a mobile AI platform that helps developers and companies build mobile applications powered by expert level AI and computer vision. Over to you, Dimitri. Hello, everybody. My name is Dmitry Richard Starson, and I'm the co-founder of Pasio. We are an AI platform that enables enterprises to build the future of AI applications. We believe in the world where apps of the future will be immersive, context-aware, and powered by personalized AI. Today, companies are struggling to deploy applications with AI modules. And uh, what we are making easy, we are making it extremely easy for companies to add modules that are helping uh, their users to experience the world with the power of personalized and context-aware AI. We started the company together with Dr. James Kelly and several other people out of Stanford Research Institute. And my background is uh, computational physics. I did my doctoral at Caltech and uh, worked at Harvard CFA and several other amazing places before starting Pasio. The problem we are solving is massive technical complexity of using AI in the enterprise space. So today, when companies want to add AI uh, or build AI applications, they are often have to go and build those teams internally. And every single day, customers are coming to us saying uh, that their internal efforts uh, cost millions of dollars and they are very, very frequently failing. And this is because ready to use and easy to deploy tools do not exist today. This is the challenge that Pasio is solving. 
we are building ready to use modules like new AI nutritionist or remodel AI specialist or uh, AI advisor that are extremely easy to add and companies can add within days uh, uh, into their applications to immediately transform from an app having no AI uh, assistant to having an AI assistant for their specific domain. And for those companies that need more complexity, we've got the full AI studios that allow very significant degree of customization. So companies are coming to us to get AI nutritionists or remodel specialists or to build their own domain specific AIs. Here is an example of how much complexity we are packaging into an SDK that can be deployed within just minutes. So with our nutrition AI, we provide volume estimation, recognition of over one uh, of millions of foods and uh, uh, ability to provide personalized nutrition advice. When companies deploy our AI nutritionists, they immediately get a capability inside of their app for their users to log meals and uh, create reports to share with coaches and doctors and get an AI-driven uh, advice about how to improve their nutrition and uh, uh, health practices to optimize their health, manage diabetes, lose gay weight or gain weight if they're uh, training uh, as a bodybuilder and uh, accomplish other health specific and fitness specific goals. Our customers in the home remodel space can deploy an AI sales specialist that scans rooms, build digital twins and shows users how their rooms would look like in the future after certain products have been applied. So for example, with Jazeera Paints, we help customers select different paints and products and get full list of instructions after they bought paints or after they inspected their room and found cracks in the room. How do we fix this? What products should we buy from Jazeera Paints to uh, complete our remodel project? Historically, this would be extremely complex. With our module, it is extremely fast and easy. And we support multiple verticals for room recognition of pills to building inventories and it all runs on device and is, uh, in most cases, we make it extremely easy through our SDKs to deploy. We've had a privilege to be working with the world's most innovative companies. Uh, we're supporting MyFitnessPal, Simple Life, Elevance Health, uh, Jazeera Paints, and quite a few others across multiple industries. And as you can see, we believe that this is a tremendously transformative business. It's also business that promises significant economic value. We've been able to monetize our SDKs at uh, over a million a year, and we uh, are constantly uh, seeing multiple sub-verticals and multiple customers coming to us and asking for use cases. So when we look at the number of use cases, we're seeing thousands, if not tens of thousands of them. And uh, we believe that uh, on average per SDK, we should be able to easily reach over a million dollar per year of monetization per sub-vertical. So it's not only a, an opportunity to transform lives of, of millions of people, but it's also an opportunity to build a phenomenal business. We're currently raising our Series A, and uh, we're looking for the lead Series A investor. Uh, and I look forward to connecting with you. You can reach me at Dmitry at PasioLive.com. Thank you. All right, thanks for the presentation, Dimitri. Now, a question for you. Since you're pursuing multiple verticals and industries, how do you describe your market and the size of your market? This is an outstanding question. Every day we are approached by companies asking us to implement context-aware personalized AI SDKs for a wide range of use cases. Recently, we were approached by an inspection company to recognize steam traps and help their inspection personnel to in inspect those steam traps. We've got use cases around skincare, inventory control, and so many others. So for another example would be scanning your house and receiving personalized recommendation for how much it would cost to completely remodel this house. We've demonstrated that we can monetize a given sub-vertical, a given SDK to uh, around a million or over a million uh, per year. And the number of use cases that we are seeing goes well into thousands and actually in tens of thousands eventually. So by our analysis, we are looking at over a billion in revenue within five years and the actual TAM that we are addressing goes into tens of billions easily and then eventually in the hundreds of billions of dollars. Thank you to the Passio team.
Now, I'm thrilled to hand it over to Oncoustics, a Toronto, Canada-based startup creating low-cost and non-invasive surveillance, diagnostics, and treatment monitoring of diseases through patented AI-based solutions running on ultrasound scans. Over to you, Beth. Hi, I'm Beth Rogozinski, CEO of Oncoustics. Did you know that over 2 billion people globally are living with or at risk of liver disease? And as this disease is most often asymptomatic until it reaches very advanced stages, most of them don't even know it. The epidemic rise in liver disease is being driven by the obesity and the diabetes epidemics, which are giving rise to a, a condition called non-alcoholic fatty liver, or NAFLD. NAFLD is the most common chronic liver disease in the world today, and UCLA Health estimates that up to 46% of the US population has or is at risk of NAFLD. Structural liver diseases such as liver fat and fibrosis are expected to drive most liver-related cancers, mortalities, and transplants in the next decade. NAFLD can also exacerbate other behavioral health conditions like diabetes and cardiovascular disease, meaning that if you have NAFLD, your risk for all-cause mortality goes up. Current preventative approaches to catch and diagnose structural liver diseases early are complex and time-consuming with several appointments and specialists involved. It's expensive and minimally available and often involves high-end imaging such as MRI, or it involves highly invasive biopsy. But there is a better way. I'm here to introduce you to Oncoustics and the novel way that we're addressing this huge unmet need and democratizing diagnostics beginning with liver disease. Our first product, the Onyx, is a complete liver surveillance and diagnostic solution for point of care liver evaluation. Our solution offers a unique inexpensive approach to quickly examine a patient's liver. Within minutes, any clinician or care team member can perform the exam and receive information on the state of a patient's liver. Oncoustics makes the complex, expensive, and invasive process of diagnosing structural liver disease seamless, painless, and done in five minutes. Oncoustics is a software-only solution that leverages existing ultrasound systems with a very unique approach. We enable ultrasound to go beyond what can be seen by the human eye by mining the sound in ultrasound. Take a look at these ultrasound images. It's really difficult here, even for a trained and expert radiologist to differentiate between these two scans. But by applying our patented machine learning algorithms, we can map the tissue acoustic properties and provide quantitative insights into liver health. With locked presets and guidance on our app, Oncoustics removes the variability of both ultrasound acquisition as well as its interpretation, making this a valuable point of care tool that can be carried in your pocket. Our 2 million plus pieces of data on liver acoustic properties is multifaceted. This data is supporting our first product that will perform liver assessment and will also serve four additional diagnostic products in the liver. We'll fully deliver and commercialize our first product by 2024 and are already in data development and partnering for future products. With these robust values that we provide and by riding on these new low cost ultrasound systems, we're poised to launch a successful SaaS based business model. With these low-cost systems, we can deploy an end-to-end -end solution for under $5,000 and charge a per-scan fee that gets reimbursed via existing CPT codes. So clinicians get reimbursed as they improve the lives and the health of their patients. We're planning on bringing these powerful diagnostics to all frontline clinicians, but especially those clinicians whose practices include patients at high risk and highest need. Our vision extends to reaching primary care clinicians so that at-risk people can get screened at the regular checkups and know and understand the health of their liver. And we have the team to execute. Our core team has expertise in ultrasound, AI, healthcare, and startups. We have world-class advisors too that include renowned clinicians and researchers and healthcare business leaders. We have key partnerships in place, which include radiology OEMs, biopharma companies, and tech leaders. We've just initiated our A round raise, and with this, we'll launch and scale our first products, start generating annual revenues, and expand our pipeline to tackle a $30 billion market and build a billion dollar business. Join us in our quest to revolutionize diagnostics. 
I look forward to taking your questions and welcoming you to our efforts. Wow, such impressive work. Can you tell us more about your business model and how you plan to scale and commercialize your offering? Excellent question. Thank you for that question. So our business model, we're software as a medical device, uh, so we don't make the hardware. And we can, in this capacity, either out-license to our OEM partners or in-license and act more like a value-added re reseller. We don't actually sell the systems, but what we can do is we can deploy an end-to-end -end sol solution that comes with a smart device and uh, an ultrasound system. This is important for a number of the clinics that we're talking to because frontline docs like hepatologists or endocrinologists uh, don't actually currently own ultrasound systems. So we can get them the full kit that they need to get started. Uh, and in this capacity, we can deploy an end-to-end -end solution for about $5,000 and then charge a SaaS-based model in that. In a fee-for-service model, we can actually go along with every scan that they do, or we can do a full you know, quarterly or annual uh, SaaS license fee. Uh, so we actually have a pipeline already of existing clinicians and clinics uh, that are interested in working with us, including the hepatologists, endocrinologists, and increasingly primary care docs uh, that are involved in accountable care organizations or capitation. Thank you for the question. Awesome, thanks on Acoustics team. Now, next up we have Halo AI, a Provo Utah based company using AI powered platforms for learning to speak multiple languages. Press a button and speak any language with an AI teacher in three seconds. Hello, my name is Jun, I'm the founder and CEO of Halo. We are an AI-powered language learning platform for speaking. You press a button and start having a face-to-face -face conversation with an AI tutor in three seconds. As an immigrant, I understand the challenges of learning a new language. The biggest one being finding opportunities to speak. Research shows that the most effective way to learn a new language is by actually speaking, practicing and immersing yourself in the culture 24 seven. But language learners spend most of their time in their textbooks and not speaking. And the main reason is because it's expensive, time consuming and ineffective. To this date, people still need to spend 20 to $30 per hour to have a one hour lesson with a native tutor. And I remember spending $3,000 per year just learning English when I was living in Korea. And it wasn't just me, but also everyone I knew because language learning nowadays is an investment for a lot of people. On our platform, you can literally press a button and start speaking in three seconds. And we offer more than 50 languages. Language learners can learn and have conversations based on their level and interests. We provide hundreds of different topics and we've, we've been training the AI in a way that it can not only hold conversations with you for any topic, but also teach you particular lessons for language learning purposes. And what's cool is that after each conversation, you get feedback and corrections so you can learn from your mistakes and keep track of your progress. Research shows that conversational practice without constructive feedback can least lead to a fossilization of inner language errors that limit the learner's long-term language ability. So we're proud that we're able to provide conversational practice, but also constructive feedback, so our language learners can learn new languages in the proper way. We launched our product five months ago, and we are going places. Thanks to globalization, international companies and organizations have been looking for our services. They need language training and assessment. And we're leveraging AI to make our services 20 to 30 times cheaper and faster than any of the tutoring platforms out there in the market. Our business model is super simple. You pay a monthly subscription fee and have access to all of our premium features. And because we don't share any of our revenue with human tutors, we have been able to build a company that's scalable, profitable, and sustainable for us. The market is huge and growing by $30 billion over the next five years, growing by 17% year over year. 
And because we offer more than 50 languages, we're able to cover more than 99% of the whole language learning market. Timing wise, it's perfect because companies are hiring employees offshore. And if you're an employee from a different country, you can work for any company now, as long as you have the right skill sets and able to speak particular languages. So we're super fortunate and excited to be in this language learning industry growing super rapidly and use AI to disrupt the whole language learning market. Andrea and I, I know the problem we're solving. And we're very passionate about language learning and utilizing our experiences and skill sets to solve this huge problem. Both of us went to BYU here in Utah. I have a consulting background. I worked with companies like Uber, Amazon, and LinkedIn. I'm a semi, I was a semi-pro gamer for StarCraft at age 12. So I'm a very competitive person by nature and obsessed with beautiful products and UX UI. Andrew got into BYU at 14, graduated in computer science with a 4.0 GPA at 18. And most importantly, he speaks 10 languages fluently. So both of us are very passionate about language learning and excited to use AI to disrupt the market. If I didn't speak English, I would not be here being able to have a conversation and present to you. So I believe that language learning is a noble mission and we're super excited to help all language learners become fluent and dream big. If you're interested in what we're working on, please reach out to me at june at hollow.ai and I look forward to speaking with you soon. Thanks for listening. Right on. Thanks, June. Now, what is Hello AI's value proposition and differentiator in comparison with other language learning platforms that are in the market today? That's a great question. There are many companies that are out there in this language learning market, but our main differentiator is our focus on speaking and communication skills. If you want to learn the basics or grammar or vocab, you can go to Duolingo or Zadistan or Babbel. But if you want to speak and practice speaking, you come to our platform. And there are other tutoring platforms like Cambly, Italki, and, and Preply, but you have to spend 20 to $30 per hour to have a lesson with a native tutor. You have to book a lesson with them. So we are unique and different in a way that we're 20 to 30 times cheaper and faster than any of the tutoring platforms out there. Thanks for the question. What an impressive platform. Next, I'm happy to introduce you to Aperva from Duality AI an augmented digital twin platform that provides end-to-end -end workflows for predictive simulation and high fidelity visualization. Hi, uh, we are Duality. Uh, we build virtual worlds for solving real problems. Uh, my name is Apurva and I'm one of the co-founders of Duality uh, along with Mike, uh, my co-founder. And we come from very different backgrounds. You know, I mine being mostly in filmmaking and storytelling and virtual worlds. Mike, on the other hand, is very much grounded in the physical as a mechanical engineer, roboticist. Um, and, and our team also has very much that diversity in, in the DNA. And, and together, you know, we've been trying to solve this problem of how do we use the tools and techniques from the media and entertainment to build virtual worlds for solving real problems. And our answer to that is Falcon. Uh, you know, our SaaS platform, it's a digital twin platform that allows customers to, uh, you know, manage the entire workflow for digital twins, especially for predictive twins, from, from acquiring them all the way to generating data. This is a great market for us. You know, digital twins is a, is a solid market, fast growing market. From a go-to-market perspective, uh, we've really focused in on autonomy for industrial and defense applications. So this is a really uh, a good example, use case for, for the kind of work customers do with Falcon, uh, you know, for DARPA, NASA JPL, basically building an off-road autonomy stack. And there's several other anchor customers we are working with, uh, you know, along these lines that, that, you know, we've really seen some good product market fit there and we're continuing to crank that go-to-market engine uh, and which we will continue to do uh, with, our, with our partners as well. But generative AI, you know, really does bring a, a really disruptive aspect to, to, to what we do. Um, 
especially in terms of embodied AI. You know, one could argue that embodied AI has been a vision for robotics from the very beginning. You know, robots that can move around in our dynamic worlds, interact with us at a human level. And we believe actually, you know, with generative AI, we are much closer to that vision. And in fact, some of the growth projections for robotics currently may be too conservative. That said, embodied AI, of course, has some real challenges, right? So, I mean, model from a model perspective, you know, there's really no room for hallucination or for 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 the model to to drift without doing tons of regression. Making sure roboticists can actually build their own mental models for for the actual AI models, and similar data challenges. You know, a lot of the data for training these uh, models has been acquired on the internet. It's not physically grounded. There are questions around domain alignment, around making sure that we can handle edge cases. And this is really where simulation becomes so much more than just a validation system. Um, you know, I love this quote uh, from Intel around, you know, data sets really uh, being the drivers for the internet AI, but simulators really being that driver for, for embodied AI. Our customers, of course, you know, um, have the same sentiment as well. And we think that Falcon really nails these problems. I mean, it's almost like we've been building our platform for, for this convergence from the time we started. Um, we can handle very diverse scenarios with our digital twin building blocks. We can integrate any kind of AI models, both proprietary as, as well as open source. And we can, of course, handle worlds of really giant uh, scale and high fidelity simulation for both the sensors and, and the systems. Uh, a little bit on the architecture of the platform as well. You know, from the very beginning, we made this decision to integrate rather than try to build everything ourselves. We have a very strong partnership with Epic Games, you know, and we use the Unreal Engine as a sort of 3D operating system. Similarly, we work very closely with Google so that our entire platform is running securely in the cloud so that these high fidelity, you know, complex simulations can be run in any web browser anywhere without worrying about hardware and drivers and all that other stuff. From a SaaS pricing perspective, you know, until now we've uh, really sort of restricted Falcon to a set of larger you know, enterprise customers. The entry level is pretty high. With Falcon 3.3, which we'll be releasing uh, in Q4, we're really sort of opening that up. So there'll be a much lower price point for smaller businesses, educational institutions, you know, you know, individual users. And more importantly, we'll also have a free account called Falcon Share that will allow uh, users to interact with these embodied AI scenarios uh, themselves. We have a waiting list going for Falcon. Uh, and you know, what we would love from all of you is to spread the word and uh, and and also engage with Falcon yourself if you're curious about embodied AI and how it might uh, play out in the real world. And uh, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much. Now, I noticed that you didn't address fundraising in your presentation and with lots of VCs watching, can you tell us more about what fundraising looks like for duality AI in the future? Yeah, no, thank you for, for that question. Obviously very critical for every startup. Um, you know, as you can imagine right now, the team is really heads down on, on the Falcon 3.3 release, which I, which I mentioned before. Um, you know, we are planning uh, to fundraise in the beginning of next year. Um, and so I think for the investors in the audience that are interested in learning more, uh, I think it's the perfect time uh, for us to start having those conversations and, and starting to see if there is a good alignment, uh, you know, in terms of uh, taking this journey together. Uh, again, thank you so much for that question. Up next, I'm thrilled to introduce our last presentation before our intermission. David Smith is the CEO of ML Twist, whose offering enables data scientists and machine learning engineers to get out of the weeds of data pipelines and back into doing what they enjoy best, designing, building, and deploying AI. Hi, welcome to ML Twist. My name's David, and I'm going to be your pilot for this session. Today, we're going to focus on a platform that gives you data pipelines for AI at the click of a button. A little bit about what's going on with AI at the moment. There's so many companies that want to adopt AI or build AI or leverage AI. And according to a report done by AIinfrastructure.org earlier this year, the biggest blockers of that are effectively data flow. What does that actually mean? When you look at data flow, 
what you have is you have so many companies in the world effectively trying to get their data from one side of this screen to the other. They're trying to get it in a way that their AI model can learn from or just to be able to use from. And what they have to do is they have to navigate the quality control concepts of AI technologies, the LLMs or the pre-trained models that can help you get your data to the way that it needs to be. And then any humans involved that are in charge of the quality control process. And while they're doing all that, they need to build all the integrations into these great technologies and they need to manage them. And on top of that, they need to adopt other technologies that come out. Great technologies such as synthetic data, augmented data, and then in order to navigate that, they also need to pick from so many great companies that are out there on how to do their integrations. And as their data evolves, they will need to continue to evolve their data pipelines. What ML Twist is working on is a revolutionary LLM to allow people to deploy AI data pipelines by working with an LLM at the click of a button. Now, what you're looking for is the ability to use natural language to prompt the ML Twist Copilot to generate your AI data workflow. And you're also looking for a platform that will deploy that pipeline for you. We don't have the LLM yet. However, just working on the components for the LLM have, have yielded some really impressive traction. We've been able to launch a self-service platform. We've been able to run several pilots and of those we've been able to convert customers and even have a public case study. We have a great sales pipeline at the moment and we can count as our customers publicly traded companies and even the US government. And on top of that, we have revenue. So in terms of the market, what's the opportunity? Really, if you're looking at the market from an AI point of view, you're going to see anything from a trillion dollars plus. We've put AI data pipelines with a total addressable market of $51 billion and a SAM of $20 billion and growing as the AI adoption curve continues. We also have a great team that has experienced this pain firsthand. You've got myself who is at Google, and able to uh, work on AI data all throughout, including at Oracle. We have Tantin, who is at Microsoft leading engineering, also incredibly passionate about AI data and AI. And then you have Audrey, who is at Amazon working on AI data orchestration and is also incredibly passionate about AI data. Really, what we're looking for is an opportunity to work with you, to help you make that decision to get out of the plumbing of AI data and into the quality and training your model. If you'd like to work with us, please come twist with us at mltwist.com or reach out to us directly, contact at mltwist.com. Thank you so much. Thanks, David. Now, would you please share with the audience how ML Twist is different from traditional data pipeline solutions? That's a really great question. I'd say one of our biggest differentiators is ML Twist is fully no code. It means that you don't need to be a programmer or a data scientist to leverage our ML Twist data pipelines. Another great differentiator is we've got an out of the box deployment solution for so many of the AI data tools that are out there ready to be leveraged by our customers. And with that team, we've reached the halfway point of today's program. I hope you are all as inspired and impressed as I am. A tremendous thank you and congratulations to the six teams that we've heard from so far. But before we dive into the second half, let's take a look back at the journey that our startup teams have been on so far. So sit back, enjoy, and don't go anywhere. After the five minute intermission, we'll hear from our remaining six teams. A tremendous welcome to the 12 startups selected to join our inaugural North American Google for Startups Accelerator Cloud. You were selected from hundreds of applicants because of the inspiring and groundbreaking work that you're doing across health tech, data analytics, ed tech, security, prop tech, and more. And it's such an honor to work alongside you. So let's get started. Our company is Aiden Automotive Technologies, and our goal is to embrace the notion that the vehicle, the next generation of connected cars, is the next mobile platform. Our startup 
is focused to solve very important uh, problem for the industry, which is re related to firmware and device supply chain. Basically, we are protecting the foundation of modern clouds. We are duality, and you know we basically um, use virtual worlds to solve real problems. Our startup is Hollow AI, and our goal is to help all language learners become fluent. So our startup, Harmonic Discovery, is a computationally focused biotech company, and our goal is to develop a platform to engineer better medicines, specifically um, small molecule drugs. Our startup is NL Twist. The, our goal is to automate the creation of AI data pipelines. Um, we do it by what we call twisting the data. Acoustics is a novel AI software as a medical device company. Uh, a lot of AI in medical devices is around imaging and image enhancement. Uh, and Acoustics does not only that, but we apply the machine learning to the raw sound signal that comes from ultrasound devices like the one that I'm holding up here. Our startup is One Cup AI. And our goal is to do computer vision for animal care. We are an AI company. We are a Google technology partner. And we are building a platform that helps companies and developers to build mobile apps powered by computer vision and personalized AI assistance. Our startup RealKey, uh, our goal is to uh, basically automate document collection, review, and then of all documents related to mortgages uh, and also the mortgage lending ecosystem. Our startup is Sevco Security, and our goal to solve the following problem. Despite the fact that Avocet inventory control is number one in virtually every security program, it's all a lie. No one knows how many devices are in the enterprise. And as a result, it creates the problem that you can't manage what you can't measure. In general, everyone's security controls, even at high-end financial institutions, are missing on about 20% of their computers. That's what Sevco's here to solve. SAI, our goal is to be the next Snowflake or Databricks for AI. So all industries, we believe that all industries will be transformed by AI and machine learning operation platform like Vesto will be the necessity for all businesses. We kick off the program by developing bespoke OKRs or goals with each startup team. Next, we dedicate two full weeks to technical infrastructure across cloud, AI, machine learning, and more. Given that, our goal is to empower companies like yourself, early stage you know, companies, digital natives typically, to build, not only build successfully on Google technically, but build successfully from a business perspective. I think paying attention to a specific set of users, right? And so, you know, a big company like Google is saying, well, we've got millions of, of users across different industries and we'll provide some general tools and, and hopefully they hit a lot of, the, of our users. Uh, but a smaller company can go in more depth. From there, we dive deep into product, design, and user experience. This is my definition of design. I like to present it when I'm presenting so that people know where I'm coming from when I say design. Uh, it's a conscious and intuitive effort to impose meaningful order. Design is both the underlying matrix of order and the tool that creates it. Next up is Growth Week, tackling marketing, brand building, and sales. The entire goal of Google Ads is that they show the best possible results for the user to have the best possible experience in order to get the information that they want. And our content concludes with a big emphasis on people and leadership. From there, we take a moment to celebrate with a demo day and graduation. Team, wow, what an amazing three months it's been. Congratulations, the world needs more visionaries like you. I cannot wait to see what you do next. A hearty congratulations to everybody on being the first group of businesses to complete our Google Cloud Accelerator program. Uh, thanks um, to each one of you for the energy, the dedication, the time. You invested into learning and growing MGCP. It's no short um, investment. Uh, it's notice when you're when you're in a startup mode, um, and we thank you for that for that time and energy. Hey everyone, I'm so excited about your completion of the 10 week accelerator program. What a thrill it's been to work closely with you to see the incredible problems that you're seeking to solve, and frankly, we're humbled by the opportunity you've given us to be able to partner and help you think about your business, your people, your process, your customers, and of course your technology. So congrats again on the amazing milestone. We look forward to continuing to 
partner with you on what will be an exciting journey between your mission and us here at Google. Thanks so much. Thank you, Google. Hello and welcome back to Demo Day. As it's clear to everyone here, it has certainly been a busy 10 weeks for these 12 incredible teams. Now, up next, I have the pleasure of introducing RealKey. Based in San Francisco, RealKey is the first collaboration platform for finance, automating documentation collection tasks and communication for all parties involved to reduce time, effort, and costs. Now over to RealKey CEO, Christopher. Well, amazing to be here. Uh, my name is Christopher Hussein. I'm the CEO and founder of RealKey. We are re-envisioning mortgage and finance. Our focus is specifically on automating, processing, and underwriting, the collection and review of documents. Um, just so you know my background, I was the top mortgage originator in the U.S. for two straight years and the only individual to have ever held a license originate process and fund in all 50 states. So it's very much a passion project for me. Uh, just giving you an example, uh, I remember Christmas not too long ago, I was making all of my clients, the borrowers uh, and home buyers, uh, holidays, rather than focusing, unfortunately, on my family that was in the living room, uh, getting kind of frustrated with me. Uh, honestly, brought me to tears and was the reason why I stopped cold turkey taking any loans and ended up doing consulting instead. Uh, really, when I focused on that, I looked at the core problem, which was all the documents involved and collecting them from all of the different parties, and especially for our paying users, mortgage lenders, brokers, and bankers, they feel this more than ever. Everything is under the gun to close quickly, locks are expiring, you got contracts with due dates. It's really difficult and it's hard to go through it and to wrangle all the cats. And unfortunately, the systems that they have today have a lot of gaps. Uh, for real key, we're very mindful, these are our partners. We integrate with each of these uh, key platforms. We don't compete with them. Uh, now for a borrower yourselves, when you're buying a house, you start out with a point of sale, filling out a loan application online. That's what a point of sale does. It's meant to be a lead gen tool, meaning that it doesn't get a very complete loan application because it asks you the maximum questions without frustrating you. And any documents that they obtain are unfortunately driven by these automated underwriting systems that don't automate much of anything. So you get a bunch of what we call no duh documents that all end up in the lender's loan origination system, which is their core platform, which is unfortunately is not very intelligent. It's a form filling tool more than anything to create documents to get signed. So they're doing everything manually. Now, looking at the timing, it can't be better than ever. Uh, really, when we're looking at the macroeconomics, inflation, housing price and interest rates, mortgage lenders and banks are all going lean right now. They're feeling the pain points more than ever because they're doing more. Additionally, timing's great because they are implementing new technologies, and as I call it, clean the shark tank between the frenzies. The last couple of years have been crazy. Then we've had the rate environment, but we're gonna see a massive boom coming up shortly. And they definitely want to take advantage of that boom where they may have failed previously, which was unfortunately on a lot of processing and underwriting. And of course, there's tons of other opportunities with what's going on in the current tech sector as well. And getting back to the product, the way that it works is that we actually take the loan application data from the loan origination systems. The lender broker goes through and uploads it to RealKey, and we then are able to create the most complete needs list you've ever seen, but uniquely not just for the bar, but for all the parties involved. Inviting them into a single platform where they can communicate, collaborate, and upload their documents, where when they upload documents, we're utilizing AI and OCR to go through and to parse those, put those into the right folders, identify what we got, what we did not get, and then also even go through and automate the review of those documents so that anything that is manual in nature are the highest level items. So you're not spending so much time on these things that can be automated. Uh, we're able to go through and assign tasks to individuals, see what else may be needed, uh, really going through and saving a ton of time so that loans can get closed quicker at a lower cost, and additionally, staff can be wrapped up faster. There's just so much benefit, and that's really where going through an automating processing and underwriting, getting closer to that perfect submission package, which is really our vision, uh, is why we've been able to go through and save on average 15 days per transaction for our paying users. It's also why we've grown so quickly since launching in August of 2021. We're now over 3,600 users and 400 different companies. Uh, and we're expecting to grow substantially over the next few years as we start adding more banks, lenders, and partners. Additionally, we're looking at adding in other revenue streams. 
through implementing new technologies that are going to go through and allow us to take advantage of the captive audiences, take advantage of the operations and processes happening in RealKey to go through and to do more for our clients, but also create additional opportunities. Now, we've already gone through and focused on SMBs to shorten the sales cycles with our enterprise clients that are already in our pipeline. And we are starting to go through and to integrate with other partners to cross pollinate with them that are also in the ecosystem. We've proven out a great digital and social media PR and content marketing plan. And we are also starting to go through and to attend more events to meet up with more of our enterprise clients. We've got an Ocean's Eleven team, as you can see here, everybody's a thought leader in their respective space. And we have numerous exits behind us. So you can trust that we know what we're doing and we're going to have success in the future. And as we continue to grow, we'd love to get anybody interested involved, whether you are a mortgage broker or banker yourself, or whether you're an investor that may be interested in getting involved in our current round. We have a 10 million open round. In fact, 2 million of it was just funded by our deal lead. So we can actually accelerate the process if you would like, and would love to go through and have further conversations. I'd like to open up for questions and thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Christopher. Now, a question for you is many mortgage tech companies are not doing well in today's high rate environment. Why is RealKey growing and how will you continue that growth? It's a great question and very timely, especially given the current rate environment. Uh, there are unfortunately a lot of mortgage tech companies not doing great. However, most of those are usually focused on lead gen, marketing, some of the point of sales intake. Um, it's also based off their business models. Uh, are they success based, meaning they're only paid when a transaction is complete or an application is taken? Um, RealKey is a subscription based model. We were very mindful as well, not only to choose a business model uh, that worked for this environment as well as in a boom, but also uh, at a price point that we knew that people would not be waiting for the next boom uh, and postpone or cancel or put on, on hold implementing real key. Um, as far as for the growth side of things, we're not a one trick pony. We have a ton of additional features that we're adding, uh, especially the AI and ML side has really uh, accelerated going through the accelerator. I mean, things that were supposed to take quarter to even additional months or it took us weeks, thanks to the mentors. Um, additionally, we're gonna be starting to go through and to leverage our technologies for other parts of the ecosystem like title and escrow insurance. It's all documents at the end of the day. Uh, and that's where us being that neutral party, we can absolutely take advantage of that. Right. Hopefully I answered your question, but a really good question. Thank you. Thank you again, Christopher and team real key. Now I'll turn it over to Mocha from one cup AI based in Vancouver, Canada. One cup uses computer vision for animal care. Their artificial intelligence, aptly called Betsy, is the eyes of the rancher when the rancher is away. Over to you, Mocha. Sitting around a campfire a few summers back, my ranching family explained how cattle are raised. Everything is done manually, similar to the way my grandfather did it 60 years ago. We realized that AI could help track and monitor animal welfare. Thus, Betsy was born. She is the eyes of the rancher when the rancher is away. There are too many animals and not enough people to care for them. With a labor shortage expected to nearly double by 2025, we need to find a way to fill that gap. Today in the US, an animal dies prematurely every eight seconds. Annually, that's nearly 4 million losses. The fatality rate varies from 7 to 15% across species, costing the industry nearly 4 billion a year. The solution is Betsy your AI ranch hand. She revolutionizes the way producers oversee their herd, ensuring optimal welfare and maximizing productivity. Say goodbye to traditional herd management and embrace the future of ranching with Betsy as your trusted companion. This is how Betsy sees. At the center, she employs face ID technology similar to your phone to uniquely identify each animal within the herd. On the left-hand side, she uses boxes to track breeding and calving activities. And on the right, using key points, she provides health and genetic insights. Betsy has two dozen vision models linked together like Lego and processes 10 million animal images per day. Here, one cup identifies just three of the top use cases in animal production. 
proactive breeding, calving, and early disease detection ensure the overall health and well-being of the herd. One Cup's alert system keeps ranchers informed about their animal emergencies around the clock. Whether it's a predator, calving, or breeding event, Betsy remains vigilant 24-7. This year, Betsy sent out over 5,000 alerts. By saving a single animal, she covers her cost for the entire season. One Cup's state-of-the-art video player enables producers to view their animals through Betsy's lens. By clicking individual animals within the video, ranchers can gain detailed information about their herd's well-being. Imagine being able to find out anything about an animal anywhere and seeing it instantly. That is the power of Betsy. Today, Betsy has deployed at over 140 locations, including cattle, sheep, and bison. With thousands of animals under Betsy's watchful gaze, she is curating one of the most extensive collections of animal data to date. In the nearly 1 million ranches in North America, half of those ranchers work full-time off-farm jobs, which means that no one is watching the proverbial hen house. Globally, there are more animals under human care than there are humans. Betsy works across multiple species from alpacas to zebras, including cats and dogs, with a potential market for automated animal care north of 20 billion. Betsy is uniquely positioned to expand the market with our efforts in sustainability, genetic improvement, and accelerating medical trials. But why now? While high-speed internet is taken for granted in cities, it remains a luxury for half the world. The tide is quickly turning as next-generation satellite companies extend broadband internet to remote farms and ranches. Betsy's impact was recently validated when One Cup beat out over 900 other companies to take home the top prize in SVG Thrive's Accelerator. But most importantly, over half of our investors are ranchers. The very people who are looking to improve their lives with Betsy are the same people who financed her development. We have assembled a team of 24 highly skilled individuals with extensive expertise and are committed to delivering exceptional results. We're actively seeking the right global partners to bring Betsy to the rest of the world. We're also accepting safe notes as part of our funding strategy and have a planned Series A round in Q4. If you'd like to talk about investment and our revolutionary approach to animal management, please reach out. Wow, such an impressive solution. Can you tell us a bit more about your customers, why they use your technology, and what outcomes they see? That's an excellent question. Our customers use our technology because it helps them sleep at night. Ranching is hard and it's 24 seven. You have to be everywhere all the time. With Betsy, you can be with calving alerts, breeding notifications and predator warnings. She gives producers individual and herd level analytics, allowing them to make data driven decisions about their animal care. Amazing work from the One Cup team. Thank you. Now, next up, we have Sebco Security from Austin, Texas. Sepco Security is a leading IT asset visibility and cybersecurity company providing a unified asset intelligence platform designed to create a trusted data repository of all devices and users and applications that an organization uses. So if you're like me and have a little gray showing up here, I'd like you to think back for a minute to where you worked in 2003. That's 20 years ago. And imagine for a second how much enterprise IT has changed since then. Like cell phones, they were all flip phones. Like the iPhone didn't get introduced until 2007. So mobile devices weren't even a thing yet. SaaS applications didn't exist. AWS didn't come around until 2006. Working from home, working remotely, bring, bring your own device. None of those were issues. Like on the one hand, it seems like nothing's changed. It's still just email, calendar, and file shares. But on the other hand, it's hard to find something that hasn't changed. And at the same time, IT has never been more important to business. Software is eating the world. And it doesn't matter what industry you're in, how big you are, what you do, every business is becoming a technology business. IT used to be about efficiency. It was a cost center. Then it became about winning by differentiating amongst your peers. But now, now it's about business survival. Now, technology leaders today are having to make decisions at faster and faster speeds about computing environments that are more complex than ever critical to the survival of their businesses. 
and they're doing so without even the most basic of maps to guide them. Uh, on the image over here on the left is from the ITIL framework. It's a baseline for how to run an IT operations program. At the center of that framework is the CMDB, the source of truth for device inventory. Over on the right is the NIST cybersecurity framework. It's the baseline for security operations. At the start of that, identify. You can't protect what you don't know exists, much less detect or respond to it. IT operations, security operations, each with their own framework for building a program and each built on an assumption, a requirement that an organization understands their own asset inventory. Sounds great, right? In the real world, the truth is nobody knows how many devices they own. I was part of the founding team of Carbon Black. It was not uncommon for somebody to buy a 50,000 endpoint license for a product to only go through the deployment processes and realize they deployed to 60,000 machines. Root cause analysis, that was usually something like, oh, yeah, we acquired that company a few months ago. Sorry, we forgot. Our inability to account for something so fundamental undermines everything else we do. My name is JJ Guy. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Sevco Security, and we are on a mission to fix it. We give our customers the best damn IT asset building possible and an extensible data collection platform. Once you have better data um, than available anywhere else, you can build better than best of breed applications on top at a fraction of the cost. That too many tool problems, that's a symptom. Bad data is the disease. We provide better data to our customers so they can make better decisions and lead to better outcomes for their businesses. Now, that's the vision, and it's the kind of vision we can build a huge company around, but it will take us years to fulfill, and we're just getting started. We just passed our third birthday in May 2023. We're headquartered in Austin, Texas, though we are a fully remote team. You can see some stats down there in the middle about the business. Despite the broader macro downturn, we're doing very, very well. Now, platforms this audacious don't happen overnight. We've got to solve one narrow acute problem in order to get the privilege to get deployed, and we're starting with the example I shared previously. Nobody knows how many devices they own. Now, the implications of that are pretty significant. You, know, the, uh, you see um, each one of these bullet points here that um, the, uh, lays that out. But it's the top three that are really driving um, the, uh, our overall traction. If you don't know how many devices you own, you don't know if the key controls that you're using to manage security on those devices um, are fully deployed. And in general, everyone is underdeployed by 15 to 20 percent. And the root cause is all about the lack of an asset inventory. Now, this is not a new problem. Vendors have been bolting on solutions for decades to existing technologies in order to improve asset inventories. The problem is that each one of those technologies has, gives you a different number, and none of them are wrong, but they are a different subset of the whole. To get a complete picture, you must aggregate those siloed inventories into a single view. At Subco, we connect to a company's existing technologies via API. We import their view of inventory, then send those through a data pipeline for processing. At the core is the asset correlation engine. It uses a multi-vector heuristic nearest neighbor analysis to deduplicate the inventory reports. Um, they, uh, after processing, we end up with the most current inventory anyone has ever had before. This enables a wide range of use cases, both for different teams to use the platform directly, as well as publishing that inventory data into other systems that depend on asset inventory. All of this real-time streaming, cloud-native, and fully multi-tenant with no agents to deploy. Now, I know that's all hand-waving architecture. Make it real for a second. Here's a screenshot of the main console. This is an org with 10,815 total devices. We've selected three sources, Automox, CrowdStrike, and Active Directory. There are 10,260 unique devices in those three sources. And you'd expect all 10,000 of those to be in all three platforms. And these guys are in pretty good shape. 90% are in all three. But you see those numbers around the outer edges? Those are all the devices in various states of partial configuration. You know, drill into one of those on the outer edges and you see the endpoint controls efficacy use case. Here's 30 Windows servers that are in Active Directory and Automox, but not running any security product. And 15 of those are Windows 2008 R2, which is end of life back in 2020. That's Sevco. In addition to the devices you've seen here, we've also pulled identity software and vulnerabilities into scope from they suffer similar siloed challenges as devices and each have their own cube problems. We are on a mission to build a reliable source of truth for IT assets, improving IT discipline, and through that, improving IT security. If you'd like to join us on that mission, give us a call. Thank you. Thanks for that great presentation. Now, can you share with us more about how challenging or simple it is to implement your solution for new customers? Uh, great question. So uh, we call it the 311. Um, the uh, three sources, one person, one hour, um, and we will give you better visibility than you've ever had before.
Uh, proof point to that, like as the Ukrainian conflict was unfolding, we um, had a urgent call from a client. Um, they knew they had a footprint in Ukraine. Um, they, uh, and we're trying to get their hands wrapped around their overall liability exposure, um, but didn't have enough confidence in the various inventories. Uh, and we set up with their team that afternoon. Um, the, uh, and by the end of that hour, we had visibility into their 60,000 person enterprise globally in the space of an hour. Uh, it was very incredible. Thank you, Team Savco. Now, I'm thrilled to introduce you to Harmonic Discovery. Based in New York City, Harmonic Discovery uses machine learning to design multi-targeted drugs for cancer and autoimmune diseases. Hi, my name is Reyes Rahman, and I'm one of the co-founders and CEO here at Harmonic Discovery. At Harmonic Discovery, what we try to do is design therapeutics that are currently not available on the market using machine learning and computational approaches. And what we really try to solve is this problem called targeted polypharmacology. You see, when we design therapeutics, typically in drug discovery, we try to design them against one protein target at a time. This is called single target selectivity, and it's kind of like playing one key on a keyboard. But oftentimes when you design that type of therapeutic, you don't take into account all the other proteins that are involved. And that drug ends up being kind of like this cat where it hits that protein, but it may hit a lot of other things along the way. And what we try to do here at Harmonic is build computational approaches that allow us to design therapeutics that really embrace the complexity of disease. Molecules that target two, three, four proteins associated with disease and avoid very specific proteins that cause toxicity. And this is called targeted polypharmacology. At Harmonic, we apply targeted polypharmacology to a family of proteins called kinases. Kinases are this family of proteins that represent 500 proteins in the human genome. And when they're mutated or dysregulated, they cause a wide variety of diseases. Most kinase drugs are promiscuous. They hit many kinases across this family tree you see on the right. Um, but despite that, there's over 70 approved kinase drugs in the market, and they represent over a $100 billion market as well. And so what we're trying to do very explicitly is to go from this, which is um, you know, very, a lot of representative molecules that are kinase drugs that hit many off targets to this, molecules that hit uh, specifically two, three, four proteins at a time and avoid other kinases associated with toxicity. And this is called targeted polypharmacology. So in order to design therapeutics with targeted polypharmacology, we built our platform called Convergence. Convergence consists of three distinct parts. One, a method that allows us to predict the entire off-target binding profile of molecules. Two, a method that allows us to design the chemical starting points that allow us to bridge uh, inhibition of one target versus another target. And then three, a model, a generative model that allows us to design drug-like molecules from these initial chemical starting points. Uh, our binding predictor method that we call KBP is well validated. If it predicts a molecule as uh, promiscuous, we see that it's promiscuous in an in vitro biochemical assay. So this is what we see with two clinical drugs called gilteritinib and lapatinib. And we see that you know, our models predict gilteritinib as a promiscuous drug, and it turns out to be a promiscuous drug. And our models predict lapatinib as a selective drug, and it turns out to be selective drug biochemically. We can also be prospective and look at completely novel molecules that have never been seen uh, before and see if they engage targets, uh, kinase targets or not. And we see that our methods have hit rates of about 40 to 98% compared to industry standard hit rates of 5 to 15. And importantly, you know, once we train this model, we can build what we call a foundation model for kinase drug design. Um, this method allows us to take initial chemical starting building blocks and then put them through a GPT-style model to design molecules that hit, let's say, kinase 1 and 2, but not 3. And we apply this approach using um, this active learning system, where we design molecules. If they hit the predictive profile, we synthesize them in our laboratories and then test them biochemically and then feed them back to our models. And when we applied this to solve a very particular design challenge, how do we add IRAC1 and 4 activity to a drug called momolotinib, which doesn't hit IRAC1 and 4, we see that this molecule, uh, we see that in 12 weeks, our method was able to add um, this activity to this drug. 
And importantly, we apply our method to solving clinical problems. And so there's a disease called acute myeloid leukemia, specifically FLT3 mutant acute myeloid leukemia. And when we talk to physicians in the field, every single one of them said that they wanted a drug that does these three things, a molecule that hits the kinase FLT3 and its mutants, a molecule that hits the kinases IREC1 and 4, and a molecule that does not hit this protein called KIT, which is associated with toxicity in patients. And so we applied the approach in our method, and we got the first molecule that hits that profile, which is called HD10085. And so, you know, at Harmonic Discovery, what we're doing is really pushing the boundaries of drug discovery, and we're looking for potential investors uh, in our next fundraising round. So uh, feel free to reach out if you're interested in learning more, and thank you. Such impactful work, thank you. Our audience is asking, how fast can you go from initial targets to novel drug-like molecules? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we can go very fast. Uh, in our own internal validation experiments, we're able to go from you know, initial targets to hits, to hit series, and to novel molecules within a matter of weeks, about 12 to 16 weeks, which is really exciting and, and really light speed compared to you know, the traditional ways, which may take months, if not uh, years, to get to novel chemical matter. So uh, it's really exciting. Uh, and thank you for that question. All right, everybody. We have the opportunity to hear from two more amazing founders. And next up, I'll hand it over to Alex from Binarly, which is an agentless, enterprise class AI powered firmware security platform that helps protect from advanced threats below the operating system. Thank you for having me. Let's deep dive into firmware security. Over the last several decades, I have held roles at Reset, NVIDIA, and Intel, leading teams to counter firmware level threats. Despite industry efforts, the scale of the problem has outpaced our ability to manage them. Uh, looking back, this is because the manual tools used by security teams have failed. To make things worse, firmware has surged in size and complexity with the rise of connected devices around the world. This is why we created Binary, a SaaS platform focused on binary risk analysis. All the security products we rely on today are dependent on firmware being secure, and the tides are finally changing. Both regulations and the market have finally realized this reality. Many believe firmware attacks are exclusive to state-sponsored threat actors. The reality is that widespread availability of implants has enabled any attacker to use them to get persistent foothold. Depending on simplistic signature-based identification at the endpoint to identify known vulnerabilities, like using old-school antivirus software against today's threats, this is where we are coming in. By combining artificial intelligence and cutting-edge tools, our solution serves as an automated in-house vulnerability researcher. It prevents vulnerabilities uh, during the supply chain, avoiding the costly deployment and incident response phases and costs. One of the many ways we are different is that we are not only able to identify the known issues, we can identify unknown ones. And these vulnerabilities are very important because they can cost a lot of money for the organizations. And we are doing that only with a firmware binary. Developers and security professionals share the common frustration with spammy tools available in the market. Our solution uses the static analysis data and machine learning to identify, validate, and remediate vulnerabilities immediately after they are built or as new releases are made up available. This slashes the time spent understanding the issues and lets developers and security professionals get to actual fixing the issue while enabling continual assessment with the most of the risks and threat intelligence uh, gathered by binary team. As always, understanding how risk relevant to your environment is necessary to prioritize, which is why we created Alex, artificial uh, intelligence assistant, which is, can not only propose the fixes, it helps you to enable, uh, and enable you to either fix the problem yourself or help your suppliers to understand the issue and shorten the detect analyze fix flow. 
As they say, all models are wrong, but some models are useful. By fixing the issues before they are externally reported, you can save substantial resources that can be better applied to improving your product or develop new features or develop new security mitigations and in general improve security posture for your organization. Most firm-related CVs arise from shared dependencies or reference code. Use it in many products. The affected range can be a few as 60 to thousands of the products, while some solutions like testing apply universally, others don't, making the total cost of fixing an issue significant. This is before considering soft issues like a brand damage, liability, customer retention, or downstream security availability and liability issues itself. Uh, having worked with our development partners, we now recognize how they see the value. Our goal is to turn and expand in these partners and tap into new markets, fitting our existing product with our strategies, achieving, achieving 1 million ACV for each customer seems visible, and we can do it even beyond. And we are looking at how we can expand to more verticals on the market. We have received 2.6 million in seed funding, which we have used over the last two years to build a dedicated team of 20 professionals and build our first version of the product with guidance of our advisory board, which is made up of some of the most prominent security leaders in the space. More importantly, we have already secured some of the largest device manufacturers and organizations as our customers. And currently, two top-tier cloud providers are piloting our solution with us. Ultimately, what we are doing is eliminating the dark corners of the risk, long ignored while providing our customers with the tools they need to manage these threats effectively. Thank you so much for your attention. I am Alex Matrosov, and we're currently fundraising my email, alex at binary.io. Looking forward to chat with you and uh, answer any questions. Thanks, Alex. Now Help us understand, how does AI and the adoption of Binary's platform benefit your customers? This is a very important question. And I would say it's exactly what makes us different. We are using artificial intelligence and machine learning to not only identify the threats from the day zero and being more proactive, we also use machine learning to um, identify unknown issues and help the developers and uh, incident response and security researchers to get immediate access to domain-specific knowledge, to fix the issues, cut the time for incident response, and understand the context of the threats, which is in many cases crucial to resolving these problems. Thank you for this question. Thank you so much, Alex. Well, everyone, if you can believe it, we have reached our final presenter for the day. Last, but certainly not least, I'm thrilled to introduce Vessel AI. Headquartered in San Jose, Vessel is an end-to-end -end MLOps platform, enabling machine learning workloads to run at any scale on any cloud. Take it away, Jaymon. Hi, I'm Jaymon An, the CEO and co-founder of Vessel AI. Vessel AI is the machine learning operation platform that enables engineers to run scalable AI workflows. The problem is that current machine learning stack is not ready for scale. These days, every company wants to train and deploy their own AI models. The problem is that it's not easy to build a scalable and reliable AI infrastructure. So they spend most of their time to solve these kinds of engineering problems instead of solving their real business problem. So Vessel is the easiest way to scale your machine learning. Vessel is a end-to-end -end machine learning operation platform for training, deploying, and automating machine learning models. So you can build the entire AI lifecycle with only three components, run, pipeline, artifact. First one is Vessel Run. You can run any kinds of machine learning tasks at any scale on any cloud. So if you want to run thousands of training jobs or hundreds of model deployment, you can just integrate your cloud and type your specifications. Then Vessel orchestrate and manage all machine learning tasks. 
the investor run, our users train their own Gen AI and LLM large language models, and some deploy enterprise scale models that can handle the billions of click streams. Second on is pipeline. Customers like Hyundai Motors use Vessel to build their own machine learning pipeline for automotive models. Just drag, drag and drop and build your own machine learning pipeline for continuous training and deployment. The last one is artifacts, which save all artifacts from machine learning process, such as data sets, models, and project progress. So AI teams can get full visibility for entire AI lifecycle with Vessel. Vessel is the only tool that covers entire ML stack, including, including Gen AI and LLM with strong enterprise references. We integrate multiple clouds and on-premise machines, aggregate all GPUs and computing resources and provide a unified interface for training and deploying any kinds of machine learning tasks. We have multiple customers from early stage AI startups to enterprises, such as Hyundai Motors, Scatter Lab, Cognex, and Team and Mobility. Those kinds of customers use our platform to transform their production AI workflows. As a result, our users produce their AI models four times faster, save 200 hours every week, save 80% of computing costs. So as you know, over the last decade, all industries have involved with software and the DevOps market has grown rapidly. So you know that AI will transform all industries within the next decade and the MOS market will grow rapidly. And Vessel will be the major player in the MOS market. So now we are raising the Series A round. It's about 10 million US dollars. So please feel, feel free to reach out to me. So thank you for the listening. And also, please feel free to ask about any, any questions about Vessel. Thank you for that, Jamon. A question for you. What is the key differentiator between Vessel AI and other ML ops platforms? Oh, thank you for the questions. There are three key differences. First, multi-cloud support. So these days, users want to use multiple clouds, such as AWS, Google Cloud, Lambda, to get sufficient GPUs and optimize their computing costs. So with Vessel, users can use multiple clouds without handling the multiple infrastructure issues. And second is end-to-end -end support. So until now, users have to use multiple tools to build their entire ML ops stack, but Vessel covers the end-to-end, -end, end, so users don't need to integrate any other complicated tools. The last one is traction from academic users. So we originally started Vessel with providing our platform to top universities, and our enterprise customers came from all of mouth without any marketing or sales efforts. So now there are no any other machine learning operation tools getting traction from academic users. And that is a wrap, everyone. I could not be more impressed with the startups we heard from today and their plans for the future. A sincere thank you to all of our presenters. You made our job easy. On behalf of Google Cloud and everyone who made this program possible, thank you. And a specific thanks to the 12 startup teams who graciously spent the last 10 weeks learning and growing right alongside us. It was our absolute pleasure to work with you. Thank you also to the Googlers and partners who generously offered mentorship and support to our startup teams and for all the work you do for the ecosystem. And to those investors that are tuning in today, if you want to connect with any of the folks that you met today or any of the founders, please reach out and we'll make that happen. And lastly, thank you to all of you, our viewers, for tuning in to learn more about these amazing companies. And with that, one final big congratulations to today's startups for their incredible accomplishments. We cannot wait to see what you'll do next with Google Cloud. Take care, everyone. Bye, everybody.